Hello students. Now we will start with new topic that is DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting, it can be means given in a simple sentence that it is a method to identify an individual from a sample of DNA by reading the unique pattern of arrangement of nitrogen bases. Here the sample. The sample can be a blood sample or a hair. This method or technique is given by Alan Jeffrey. First, we should have one basic idea that among all organisms which are present in the universe, 99.9% .9 of the nitrogen based sequence are C. Only 0.1% of the arrangement or the pa unique pattern of nitrogen based arrangement, it is different. That is only showing the diversity of one organism from other organism. 99.9% .9 of base sequence, that bases are nitrogen base sequences are same. 0.1% of nitrogen base sequence is unique or different. That is only differentiating one organism from the other. Now, this 99.9% .9 of nitrogen base arrangement, it stores genetic information. Stores genetic information. We can consider this one as euchromatin. Now, this 0.1% of nitrogen base sequence is not storing any genetic information. So, we can also use here a term like these are non-coding sequences. These do not store genetic information. They are not responsible for coding or translation into any type of an amino acids. So, called as non-coding sequences. We have seen the non-coding sequences during transcription in uh, means in the form of HNRNA. There we have seen introns and the exons. DNA, when it is separated basing on the density gradient also, we have seen DNA is having two different set means strands. So we can say if this is the genetic or uh, sorry DNA molecule, most of the DNA molecule will be bulk and it is of 99.9% .9 which is having genetic material. Little bit part will be considered as non-coding sequences that is 0.1 percentage of nitrogen bases. This point one, we give a term for this as satellite DNA. Satellite chromosome also we study when we are reading about the chromosomes like this. This is considered as the primary constriction. Here will be the secondary constriction and little bit of extra means a chromosomal part will be here. We are calling it as satellite part of the chromosome. Now, this satellite DNA are of two types. That is mini satellites and micro satellites. Satellite DNA further classified into mini satellite DNA and micro satellite DNA. These both are classified on the basis of this one and this one are classified on basis of adenine and guanine content and guanine is to cytosine content means how many number of adenine guanine combinations are there, how many number of guanine and cytosine combinations are there. Basing on these two types of combinations and the percentages that they are present, these both are classified. And also basing on, on basis of length, 
of the satellite DNA. Next, <clears throat> on basis of the number of repeated sequences. On basis of repeated sequences. What is meant by this repeated sequences? We know that we are having only four different types of nitrogen bases. Adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. Sometimes in satellite DNA, this can be arranged like this. For suppose A, T, G, C. Again, this will be continued. Adenine, 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 thymine, guanine, cytosine. For suppose, if it is arranged like this, again it will be repeated. Again it will be repeated. It can be of any type. But the repeated sequence means once one complete gene sequence is responsible for one genetic information, again it will be repeated for many times. If it is like this, again it will be repeated for many times. If it is <coughs> adenine, thymine, thymine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, again it will be repeated adenine, thymine, thymine, guanine, guanine, cytosine. Like that, in case of satellite DNA, the gene, uh, the nitrogen basic uh, sequences are repeated many times and that decides the total function of satellite DNA. <coughs> Here, many satellites are also called as VNTRs. What is full form of VNTRs? Full form is variable number tandem repeats. As I have expressed here, the combinations of the nitrogen bases is repeated. Tandem repeats. Now, this microsatellite, here the minimum number of nitrogen base space are 2 to 9. 2 to 9 base space are arranged here and these are also called as Simple sequence repeats. As we have written here as VNTRs, this can be written as SSRs. These are also called as short tandem repeats or STRs. <coughs> so this, this is the classification of satellite DNA. Now we will see the process of DNA fingerprinting with the help of, because while studying about DNA fingerprinting, we will come across these words like VNTRs or tandem repeats. How DNA fingerprinting is done? By using chemicals to separate the DNA strands and reveal the unique pattern of the genome or the genetic material. So first, by using chemicals and some physical properties. We will elaborate these uh, words like chemicals and physical properties. The DNA strands are extracted and strands are separated. First step in DNA fingerprinting. If a tissue or the sample is available, from the sample, the DNA strands are separated by using uh, one method already we know in biotechnology, that is, if you take out a tissue or a, uh, any type of uh, means plant or uh, animal part, then we grind that one, we add trichloroacetic acid and we separate DNA by the method of spooling by adding chilled ethanol on the test tube. From the sample, DNA is separated. If it is a tissue, then we add, use trichloroacetic acid chemical and also chilled ethanol, etc. But if a small sample or hair or something is available, still we can use these chemicals and separate the DNA by 
the spooling method means which when in a test tube when we add all these chemicals this will be the waste material or which is a combination of other non genetic materials and here on the topmost we see chilled ethanol but here in the middle we see the dna fragments now these dna fragments are separated with the help of spatula that we are calling as spooling first dna is separated or extracted the extracted dna in the next step it is allowed for pcr technology allowed for pcr method what is pcr increasing for suppose if we have got in the sample only two number of dna fragments we cannot do the experiment only with two because sometimes it may get success or sometimes it may get failed so we need many many number of copies of available dna strands so we allow them for polymerization in the sense increasing the number of dna strands pcr method full form is polymerization chain reaction here we use many of the physical uh, types of uh, properties like high temperature by uh, for polymerization first of all we have to separate the double stranded dna into sub, uh, into two different one then we must make many copies by the method of amplification so here allowed for pcr to increase quantity of available dna strands quantity of dna strands that is double strands in the third step this pcr completely we will read in a biotechnology topic so i am not explaining here next one is amplification in amplification can also be one of the step in uh, pcr technology here especially uh, if you want to analyze amplification making the same number of dna copies not any other different means preparing many copies of same dna sequence <coughs> now the next method is very important from here in dna fingerprinting now we use the endonucleases endonucleases to cut dna fragments into small pieces those small pieces are very much helpful in studying uh, the dna what are the nitrogen based sequences very soon and easily into smaller fragments so that the next further studies are very much easy to carry on so these are first four steps in the dna fingerprinting method next after obtaining of a small dna fragments then they are allowed for gel electrophoresis this is fifth step allowing the cut dna fragments for gel electrophoresis in the gel electrophoresis we take an solidified agarose gel in which already the wells are prepared we pour the obtained smaller dna fragments into those wells here these are collect, connected with the electrodes and current is continuously passed so that the opposite end will be having positive charge the area which is near to the wells in which dna fragments are poured will be having negative charge dna has negative charge because of the phosphate ions so when we pass the electricity then nearby there are long dna fragments and when it is going away from the wells it is showing very small or uh, light dna fragments very much smaller one so if you want to sub means clearly see the smaller dna fragments here is there any method because agarose is transparent in color there is no specification 
So we add here ethidium bromide so that DNA fragments are appeared in orange red in color so that we can identify these orange red colored parts are nothing but DNA. So here we add ethidium bromide to color DNA so that we can uh, clearly see those DNA fragments. Next. In the sixth step, those DNA fragments which are obtained from this uh, means smaller DNA fragments from the agarose plate, they are small DNA fragments are transferred to nylon sheet or nitrocellulose paper. So if this is a nitrocellulose paper, then the orange red colored small DNA fragments are allowed to disperse on the nylon sheet. Now here at this stage, they can be stored for many years in the laboratory, which can be used even after few years for the next tests. Here at this stage can be stored for many years. In the next step, now the DNA fragments are sticked onto the nitrocellulose paper. The known sequences are called as probes are synthesized. These are separately synthesized, not included with nitrocellulose. Are synthesized and added to DNA fragment containing nitrocellulose papers. DNA fragment containing nitrocellulose papers. This process is called as hybridization. This process means we are adding the already unknown DNA uh, fragment sequences with that of known DNA, uh, DNA fragments that are called as probes. This process is called hybridization. Means the nitrocellulose paper plus probes are mixed here. These probes actually are of radioactive type. Are of radioactive. In nature, you will write. What is meant by radioactive in nature? When we expose a light, a fluorescent light or UV light, they will be appeared in different colors. So, we have come up to the hybridization method in which nitrocellulose papers are added with the probes. The gene sequence or the nitrogen based sequence of probes is known, but the DNA fragments which are sticked onto the nitrocellulose paper, right, with the DNA are unknown, means the unknown gene sequences are added with probes. So that what happens? We know the sequence of the probes. These probes will go to the concerned DNA fragments and they will bind with the help of hydrogen bonds. That total is called complementarity. First, suppose if this is a nylon, uh, nylon sheet or nitrocellulose paper, which are having small DNA fragments like this, we have added the probes. Probes are of radioactive in nature. If so and so probe is having complementarity with this one and this one and this type of DNA unknown sequences, then they will form 
a complementarity at that particular area only. Here, only single DNA strands are still seen. It means that probe is not having the complementary nitrogen based sequence uh, to bind on to that one. For suppose, if a probe is having gene sequences like adenine, cytosine, adenine, guanine, thymine, this sequence we know already we have prepared in the lab. The DNA, smaller DNA that are obtained from the uh, gel electrophoresis now are sticked onto the nitrocellulose paper. DNA on this we don't know. Nitrogen, sorry, nitrocellulose paper. We don't know their gene sequence. But if probe has formed some bonds with unknown DNA sequences, it means that they are compulsory of thymine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, adenine. Then only it will form the hydrogen bonds. So probe uh, forming or binding to one unknown DNA fragment means it binds with that unknown if there is only complementarity with help of hydrogen bonds. Okay, next step will be eighth step. They are allowed for X-ray filming. So when they are formed into X-ray, when exposed, right here this one, when the membranes, nitrocellulose membrane or the paper is exposed to X-ray filming autoradiography. Then the bands of the hybrid are clearly visible. Now we will write this one again. Nitrocellulose paper. Now after exposing to the X-ray filming, then here we have seen this combination. This appears in dark in color. We cannot see two different strands. And here one and here one. Means they are clearly visible in form of bands. Dark bands. Then we can separate whatever the uh, strands are there. And we can compare to the unknown sample that is uh, given for the test. And we can analyze whose genetic material is this and who is that individual. This we will see how these nitrocellulose papers are sticked with DNA in a diagrammatic form. The probes that are taken during means hybridization method are taken from VNTRs and studied prior. The gene sequence of these probes is well known. Now, how these probes are added onto Oh, means nitrocellulose paper for uh, having complementarity with that of DNA. That method is called as hybridization that we do after southern blotting. See here how the DNA are getting transferred onto nitrocellulose paper. Take out a tray, add with buffer. Here buffer we can take one best example like TAE. This is uh, uh, tris acetate EDTA, ethylene diamino tetraacetic acid. TAE, its full form is, for suppose I am telling, not only this, there are different types of buffers used. What is use of buffer? Buffer is used to maintain the pH. Tris acetate ethylene diamino tetraacetic acid. Ethylene diamino tetraacetic acid. Now, this will be a glass block. On the glass block is arranged a filter paper because filter paper will absorb the buffer but it will transfer the moist nature of the buffer only. This will be the agarose gel. Agarose gel. Here red color marked is the nitrose. The agarose gel is having different uh, sized DNA fragments. This is nitrocellulose paper nitrocellulose membrane. Again here on the nitrocellulose membrane we see the filter paper arrangement. 
filter paper. For when we uh, means put some weight on all this arrangement, then DNA fragments are attracted towards the nitrocellulose membrane. So this will be the weight. This is how we do the southern blotting. Southern blotting is a technique in which only DNA fragments are separated. So after that hybridization method, the extra probes will be washed off and then allowed for X-ray filming. So if somewhere some uh, crime or something has happened, they have got, uh, people have got some samples, blood sample or some hair like that. So the suspected person's first blood sample is taken and it and its uh, uh, gene sequences are studied. So that person's, the known person uh, blood sample sequence all will be undergone all this process and this is considered as suspected person's his uh, gene sequences are first studied by all this process and framed into one sheet like this auto radiography film then we don't know what what uh, whose blood sample is available at the crime or uh, some uh, area where uh, some abnormal conditions have happened then this is of sample or person one we can write this is sample one sample one x-ray film and this is sample two now, this X-ray film sequence is of the known persons. And we have taken uh, one, two different types of samples from the suspected area or some crime happened areas. If the, which film is, means equally matching to that of known uh, film sequences, then that person will be considered as he is in that crime happened area. This DNA uh, fingerprinting method is mostly conducted and the samples are collected by the forensic department lively from the area where some crime has happened. They will be doing all this process. First of all, they will take the sample of the person and study his gene sequences uh, from the BNTRs only by doing all this process and from the sample that is available from the crime area. So this is much useful uh, by the means much uh, used by the forensic department to analyze who is, is the victim or the blood sample uh, that is available from the crime area is of the person who is suspected or of the victim. So this is about DNA fingerprinting. Here we have used to one term like southern blotting. Now if there is a southern a term like uh, southern a term like southern blotting which is used for extraction of DNA there must be some term like northern blotting also. So northern blotting is used for extraction of RNA. There must be some other term like western blotting also that is used for extraction of the proteins or the immunoglobulins. There must be some other term which is very much less used that is used for identification of carbohydrates and also very rarely the proteins. Carbohydrates and the proteins. Nowadays, this western blotting is uh, not that much used Instead of western blotting, ELISA technique is used. So this is all about DNA fingerprinting method.